Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I am Santosh and here in my channel I discuss topics from physics and mathematics. As usual, today I am here with one more new topic for you guys and the name of the topic is units and measurements. Guys, this entire topic will be covered in series of videos and this is the first video. And in this video, we are going to discuss the following points. First, we will discuss the basic definitions related to this topic where we will see what is measurement, what are the units and what are physical quantities. And after that, we will discuss about types of physical quantities. Once we are done with that, we will look into various systems of units that were used in the past to measure the physical quantities. And finally, we will end our discussion with international system of units or simply SI unit, which is the currently used internationally accepted system for units. But before starting the discussion, I request you guys to watch the video until the very end. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also share this video with your friends. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so that you will be notified every time I drop a new video. Let us begin our discussion with three important terms which are related to one another. And these three terms are measurement, physical quantity and unit of a physical quantity. To understand how these terms are related, let me give you the definition of measurement. Guys, the measurement is a process of comparison of a physical quantity with standard reference called unit. To make it more clearer, let us consider an example from our day to day life. Guys, imagine yourself going to market to buy some vegetables. One thing that you always look for when you are buying vegetables is the quality of vegetables. Of course, there is one more thing which is very important that is price. Once you are okay with quality and the price, you will buy the required amount of vegetables. Along with quality and price, you will always make sure that vendor is giving you the right amount of vegetables. How do you do that? You do it by comparing the weight of vegetables with some standard weights. So here in this example, weight of the vegetable is a physical quantity, standard weight is a unit and process of comparison is measurement. Guys, the result of measurement is always expressed by a numerical value followed by a unit. For example, weight of vegetable is expressed something like this. Here 20 is the numerical value and kg is the standard reference or unit. And this same format is used for expressing the measurement of any physical quantity. Let me quickly summarize everything that we have just discussed. Physical quantities are quantities which can be measured. Unit is the standard reference of a physical quantity and measurement is a comparison of physical quantity with unit. Because not only in buying vegetables, rather we come across many such situations where measurement is absolutely necessary. For example, when you buy clothes, or when you buy shoes, it helps you to find the right fit. Even when you are making a tea, you won't add sugar without measuring it. Just like this, in physics also, the measurement has huge role to play. To understand this, let us go back to very basic question. What is physics? In simple words, physics is a systematic attempt to understand the universe that we live in. We believe that everything, every event or every single phenomena in the nature is governed by some law. The work of a scientist is to discover these laws of nature. But the question is how exactly they do that? Guys, the scientific process of discovering the laws involves a series of interconnected steps. These are careful observation, controlled experimentation, detailed analysis, both qualitative as well as quantitative, building a mathematical model and finally predicting the outcome of a phenomenon. If they can prove what they predict, then they get to propose a new theory or modify or falsify the existing one. When studying a particular phenomena, the scientists define and measure the physical quantities that are related to that phenomena. Then they try to find how these physical quantities change with respect to one another in the entire process. And finally, they formulate the laws in terms of these physical quantities. For example, Newton explained his laws of motion in terms of force, mass and acceleration. In short, what you need to know is that measurement is an important aspect of physics. And what is more important is we need units to measure these physical quantities. Now the question is how many physical quantities we have in physics? Because the number of physical quantities is very large. In fact, we can have as many as we can. But the difficulty is we need large number of units for measuring these physical quantities. For your information, defining a unit for a physical quantity is not an easy task by any means. Because every unit you define should have following properties. Number one, invariability. The defined unit must not vary. For example, you cannot choose the size of your palm as unit for measuring the length because it varies from person to person. 
Number two, easily available and reproducible. You cannot choose some rare property or phenomena to define the units. It must be easily available and reproducible at any place, any time. As I said, it is not an easy task. But fortunately, we don't need to define units for all the physical quantities because most of these physical quantities are interdependent or interrelated. So we only need to define few units and then use the combination of these units for all other quantities. To understand more about this, we will move to the next part of this video, which is types of physical quantities. Guys, we can classify the physical quantities into two main categories, namely fundamental quantities and derived quantities. Fundamental quantities are those quantities which do not depend on any other quantities. Examples of such quantities are length, mass and time. Whereas derived quantities are those quantities which are dependent on the other quantities. For example, area, speed and density. Guys, we know that area of a rectangle is given by length into breadth. And to measure area, we can use the unit defined for the length. Similarly, the speed is given by distance travelled upon time. Here also the unit of speed can be derived from the distance and time. To put it in a simple language, derived quantities are like different dishes created from combination of few ingredients called fundamental quantities. But still now I have not told you who decides these units. There is a body named CGPN which has been given authority to decide units by international agreement. And the system of units which is currently used is called SI unit. SI is short form for system international D units. In English, we simply call it as International System of Units. And this system came into existence in 1971. But before that, scientists from different countries were using different systems of units for measurement. Now let us move to the third part of this video and discuss three such systems from the past. First, we have CGS system. The name comes from the base units used for the length, mass and time. In CGS system, the length was measured in centimeters mass was measured in grams, time was measured in seconds, hence the name CGS. Then we have FPS system. In FPS system, the length was measured in foot and the mass was measured in pound and the time was measured in seconds. And finally, we have MKS system. In MKS system, the length was measured in meters, mass was measured in kilogram and time was measured in seconds. The problem with using different system is that it will be difficult to communicate with people from different places all around the world. With this, we move to the final part of this video where we are going to discuss the currently used system, which is SI system. As I already told, in 1971, CGPM held its meeting and decided this system of units. And these units are now used for scientific, technical, industrial and commercial work. The main advantage of SI units is that they use the decimal system and this makes the conversion within a system simple and convenient. Guys, the SI system gives us total of 7 fundamental quantities along with 2 supplementary quantities. So we have 7 fundamental units and 2 supplementary units. Let us discuss all these quantities along with their units and symbols. Starting with the fundamental quantities, first we have length which is measured in meters and it is denoted by letter M. Then we have mass which is measured in kilograms and the unit is represented by letters kg. Next we have time which is measured in seconds and it is denoted by letter s. Yes. Next we have electric current which is measured in ampere and it is denoted by letter a. And then we have thermodynamic temperature which is measured in kelvin and is denoted by k. Next we have amount of substance which is measured in moles and it is denoted by letters mol. Finally, we have luminous intensity which is measured in candela and is denoted by letter CD. Now let us look at two supplementary quantities namely plane angle which is measured in radian and is denoted by letters RAD. And then we have solid angle which is measured in steradian and is denoted by letters SR. The main difference between fundamental and supplementary quantities is that supplementary quantities do not have dimensions. We will see more about dimensions in our next video. Guys, since physics deals with things happening at both microscopic and macroscopic levels, the magnitude of these quantities vary over a wide range. For example, we talk about size of a nucleus which is about 10 raised to minus 15 meters and also about the distance between sun and earth which is about 1.51 into 10 raised to 11 meters. Similarly, at one end we have mass of electron which is 9.1 into 10 raised to minus 31 kg and on the other hand, we have mass of our galaxy, which is 2.2 into 10 raised to 41 kg. So to deal with these wide range of values, 
the SI system gives us the standard prefixes for certain powers of 10. Here you can see the list of prefixes for different powers of 10 and you can make use of these when expressing results of your measurement. With this we come to an end of this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for next video.